Praise the Lord. You might sure rise up as we pray together. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for our worship service. Thank you for bringing us together peacefully and unitedly to fellowship together around the table of the Lord. We ask you, O oh Lord, that your word, your bread of life will reach every soul and every heart today and you help us to be the people we ought to be in Jesus' name. We pray that your grace will flow into our lives. We pray that your love will flow into our lives. And lives as we touch one another, relate with one another. That Lord, the light will shine on our pathway in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that your name will be glorified. And I miss today. We pray, Lord, that everything that is lacking in every heart and every soul, every body, that you'll supply every lack and limitation in Jesus' name. Bless us so we can become channels of blessings for the lives of other people. Reach out to us so we can reach out to other people, winning them to come know you as Lord and as their Savior, as you, our Lord and Savior too. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. We can sit down. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 60. I'm reading from verse 1. Arise, shine. For thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Here the prophet comes to the people of God and announces to them that God wanted to bring his glory, his majesty, his power to bear upon their lives. And so he says, instead of lying down on the ground, instead of being dejected and depressed, and instead of remaining in despair in the dungeon of their problems, he said, arise, and now you can shine, because the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Even though things are different in the whole world, in verse 2, for Behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee. Give me a good amen. amen. Darkness in the whole world, gross darkness upon the people of the world, and yet he says for the people of God, because of his promise, and because of his power. He says, he'll make us different. That we will not be despondent as the others are despondent. We will not be in despair as the other people around us are in despair. And we're not going to lie in discouragement as the other people are in discouragement. And we're not going to be in darkness. You will not be in darkness. Other people around us because they do not know the Lord. And the light of the Lord is not shining in their hearts. It says there will be gross darkness all over the world. But the Lord shall arise upon thee. And the glory shall be seen upon thee. And the gentle shall come to thy light. I said the gentle shall come to thy light. What do you think? If there is darkness in the very in the community. And then up yonder there on the house on the hill we see the light shining and the people want the light of the day and because darkness is covering all their communities and every everywhere around and they see the light over there they'll be rushing there the lord is saying he's going to give us light here and it's going to be a revival and there's going to be a lot of people flocking into the church and saying i want that light i want that glory i want that power that's why it says for the gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising and a lot of things are going to happen when such a thing uh, begins to happen that is when that revival comes when that power comes and when the glory of the lord comes upon the people of god and all over and around us there is darkness but the light is shining among the people of god what's going to happen i'm going to read to you from verse 4 lift up thine eyes round about and see 
All they gather themselves together, they come to thee, they are coming to thee. Our district churches will grow. Our youth section will grow. Our women ministry will grow. Everything that we touch will come to prosperity in Jesus' name. It says, they come to thee, thy son shall come from far. And thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. All those sons and daughters in the faith. And sons and daughters spiritually. And sons and daughters biologically that are far away. And we have not heard from them. They are coming back home. And then shall thou see and flow together. And thine heart shall, shall fear and be enlarged. Because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. Poverty will go suffering will go all the sicknesses will vanish away and the goodness of the lord will flow to us in jesus name and the forces of the gentiles shall come unto thee the multitude of camels shall cover thee and the dromedaries and it says of median and Epha, and all day from sheba shall come and they shall bring gold and incense and they shall show forth the praise of the lord all the flocks of kedah shall be shall be gathered together unto thee and rams of nebaoth shall minister unto thee they shall come up with acceptance on mine altar i will glorify the house of my glory i thought you'll say amen, amen. who are these that fly as a cloud and as the doors to their window to their windows uh, surely the owls shall shall wait for me and the sheaves of tashish first to bring thy sons from far and thy silver and their gold with them unto the name of the Lord thy God and the Holy One of Israel because he has glorified thee. He will glorify you. And the sons of strangers shall build up the wall, thy walls and thy king and their kings shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Yeah. Therefore, thy gate shall be open continually. Yeah. They shall not be short day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles. All their powers will come to bow before you. Yeah. And every strength and courage and power they have, everything will be given unto us in Jesus' name. And then it says, uh, they, uh, and that their kings may be brought for the nation and the kingdom that will not serve thee. The nation and the kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee. The fir tree and the pine tree and the box together to beautify the place of my sanctuary. And I will make the place of my, of my feet glorious. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. All they that despise thee shall bow themselves together down at the soles of thy feet. And they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through thee, I will make thee an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. Thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles, and shalt suck the breast of the king. And thou shalt know that I, the Lord, I am the, thy Savior, and thy Redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. For brass, I will bring gold. For iron, I will bring silver. And for wood, brass. And for stones, iron. I will also make thy officers peace and thy exactors righteousness violence shall no more be had in thy land wasting and destruction within thy borders but thou shalt call thy wall salvation and thy gates praise 
the sun shall no more uh, shall be no more thy light by day neither the brightness shall uh, for brightness shall the moon give thee light give unto thee light but the lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light Amen. thy god thy glory Amen. thy sun shall no more go down Amen. neither shall thy moon withdraw itself for the Lord shall be thine everlasting light, and the days of thy mourning shall be ended. Thy people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand. And a small one is strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. The Lord is telling you that something glorious is on your way. And we're going to be radiant like the sun in the sky in Jesus' name. The Lord is leading this church and leading every section and leading every family and leading every individual into a radiant light. And you will shine. And the time that is beginning is this very time. And the Lord is saying, if you're hanging your head in shame, if you've been hanging your head in discouragement and despair, the Lord is saying, there is no sorrow for the child of God. He saying, now arise. And you see now you will shine because your light has now come and the glory of the Lord will shine and arise be risen upon thee. And it says where you are small you will become a thousand and where you are moderate you will become a mighty nation. And the Lord is saying he is ready to do it. Are you ready to receive? I want to talk to you this morning on the secret of a radiant light. The secret of a radiant life because here is what the lord has promised his own it says we must be radiant it says we look at everything that is past and all the darkness that is gone you forget all about that and then you allow yourself to have the radiant life the secret of a radiant life i'm, re I'm, I'm talking about this under the series of titles number one reflecting the light of the savior you come to the lord is your personal savior and then when you come to him all your darkness is gone and then you now come to reflect the light of the savior reflecting the light of the savior number two radiating the life of the sanctified radiating the life of the sanctified after you are saved, you come nearer to the Lord. It becomes more prominent in your life. It becomes preeminent in your life. And then it takes that old self-centeredness. It takes that away. And then it sanctifies you and begins to radiate the very life of the sanctified. Radiating the life of the sanctified. Number three, restoring lives through spirit-filled saints. Restoring lives, your life is going to be restored. Everything you have lost will be restored unto you. And everything you didn't even lose but should have got but you didn't get. But everything you are going to have in Jesus' name. Spiritual blessing, material blessing, personal blessing, corporate blessing, and church, ecclesiastical blessing. The Lord will give unto us. Restoring lives through spirit-filled saints. I come to number one, reflecting the light of the savior the lord jesus christ has told us that he is the light of the world and when we come to him we're not going to walk in darkness or live in darkness at all in john chapter 8 looking at verse 12 john chapter 8 verse 12 then spake jesus again unto them saying i am the light of the world isn't that good news that even though there's darkness in the world in the gentile nations and even the jewish nation spiritual darkness total darkness and yet he says christ said i am the light of the world and then he said he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness we're going to follow the lord 
and every form of darkness will be totally dismantled and destroyed out of our lives in Jesus name the power of darkness will not have any rule over you and the path of darkness will be closed for you you are going to walk in the path of light because now we are the saviors that is we belong to the savior and it says because we belong to the savior he that believeth in me and he that followeth after me will not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life light will shine in your way in john chapter 12 verse 46 john chapter 12 verse 46 i am come a light into the world and whosoever believeth on me shall not abide in darkness now you come to know the lord you turn away from your own darkness you turn away from your own sins you turn away from your own evil and then you see christ the light of the world and say that's him he is my savior that's him he is my savior that's him who came from glory to show us light here and to point to us the path that leads unto light eternal that he is the light that is so white and so bright there's no darkness at all that he is in heaven and says going i'm going to follow him and he says he that believeth on me and he that followeth after me shall not walk in darkness at all that's why the lord is giving us a challenge as well as a command mention ephesians chapter 5 reading from verse 14. ephesians chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 14 then i'll back off a little bit verse 14 wherefore he says awake thou that sleepest awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead and christ shall give thee what light that's why we reflect the light of christ we don't have any light of our own there's no light in the human nature there's no light in the natural man there's no light in the unsaved man he might be educated he might be prosperous he might look like a great man but if he's not born again all is darkness it is when christ comes it is when you turn away from your sin you turn away from your idolatry you turn away from the past of darkness you turn away from the secret cult and you turn away from all those depraved things that you've been doing and then you turn to the lord jesus christ that he the light of the world will then come to you and shine as a bright spiritual light like a star in your heart let me back up now chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 8 ephesians chapter 5 we're looking at it from verse 8 for ye was sometimes darkness before you knew the lord before you came to christ ye were sometimes darkness but now are ye light in the lord walk as children of light it is coming to the lord it is repentance it is believing on the lord jesus christ it is holding on to him as your savior that brings this light unto you for the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth proving what is acceptable unto the lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness you are there before that was your life in the past but now it says you have come to christ you have abandoned the way of darkness and you have come to jesus christ the light of the world and it says now that you are born again now that you are a child of god now that he tells you you are no more in darkness but you are in the light have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather reprove them let your life condemn their actions let your joy con condemn their sadness let your life in christ condemn their life in the world of a life of godliness let everything you do everything you say and the way you carry yourself and the way you comport yourself be a condemnation to them that do not know the lord don't have fellowship with them don't copy them don't act like them don't live like them don't behave like them don't conduct your life like like they conduct their lives but it says you'll not have fellowship or unity or those some fruitful works of darkness rather your life as well as your message will reprove them for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret 
What a shame. All those people, the people of the world, to think about their unclean lives and to think about their profligate lives, to think about their adulteries and their fornications and their works of the flesh, and to think about their bribery, their corruption, and to think about the deals they have in the secret, and to think about some things they do in secret that nobody will even want to hear. It's a shame to talk about, even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret, behind closed doors. And when they make the darkness to cover up themselves and they are not able to come out and they do those things behind the curtain. That's a shame for them. And you, believer, come out and be in the light and come out and show yourself and show that life of Christ that you ought to live. The 